Okay, this is a game that I played against my Kasparov chess computer. I annotated the game and then I uh, plugged it in here to Chess Master, uh, just so you could see it here. It was on level C4, which probably doesn't mean much to you, but it's a pretty difficult level. It's one of the hardest levels I've ever beat the game on. And um, I, was, I was black as well, or in this case it's the turquoise pieces up top, and the computer was the white pieces this time. So let's begin. Um, let's see, my first move here, uh, e4, uh, followed by e5. And we bring out the knights, bishops, and it looks like the Joko piano opening is what uh, we're looking at here. So we're still, uh, we have a bit of symmetry going on here. Continue. We're basically just copying each other, or I should say I'm copying him because uh, he uh, has the initiative. Pins my uh, knight to my queen. And I decide that I have to do something about that pin, so I pressure the uh, G bishop with my pawn pretty much forcing him to capture the knight which definitely helped me because I got rid of the bishop and I was able to bring my queen out of course he now moves his knight to threaten my queen um, which is one reason why you don't bring your queen out because now he has developed his knight further onto my side of the board and now my queen has to retreat so that's a uh, wasted move essentially well it wasn't a waste because I did uh, capture and uh, get rid of his bishop so I just back my queen up to where she was before now it's tempting in a situation like that to uh, I don't know maybe move the queen back to, to e7 so that she's essentially moved off of the back file or I'm sorry back rank and uh, so she's technically um, contributing towards uh, development of the pieces and uh, defending or controlling the center but you know I wanted to be conservative plus I had to, to uh, defend uh, this uh, C7 square uh, from a potential fork by the uh, knight here so I just moved her back which I think was a good move. Now he moves his uh, bishop over and that was also a uh, wasted tempo for him because uh, he could have technically brought it out to b5 to begin with instead he went to c4 then b5 so he's moved his bishop twice now. Now I uh, pin his knight to his queen he goes ahead and takes my uh, knight with his bishop. Now I double up my pawns here, but this is a good move because A, I've traded both of his bishops uh, for knights. And um, not only did I uh, get rid of his bishop there, but now I'm threatening his knight, forcing that to move. So I've gained a tempo with that play. He uh, retreats. That was also a key move uh, before I castled here. Let's uh, let's go back real quick. Um, as you can see, the highlighted uh, d5 square. I'm now controlling that with this pawn. So I guess he is too. But there's no way that anybody's going to put a, a knight there or a bishop there um, because they could be taken by a pawn. So that that was kind of key right there. That move. Okay. So then I castle. And uh, he follows suit and castles himself. Now this was a key move because I was able to uh, now develop my pawn and advance it. And then ideally I'll get rid of this pawn or trade it off. And then I'm going to open up this F file. 
which is pretty key because I already am threatening the uh, knight right here on f3. He uh, pretty much has no choice. He goes ahead and takes that uh, pawn. Now I take it back with my rook. Now you can see that I am now threatening the uh, f3 knight twice. And he's defending it twice. But this is creating a bad situation for him. Now I have my uh, back row, my 8th uh, rank is open. I can start moving my queen over, moving my other rook over, and it's going to be bad news here for white. He brings his queen up to defend. Um, I'm not really sure if that was the best move there. He was still uh, defending that knight, and it's, he's still pinned to it, but he's trying to uh, gain a position here on the, the e-file. So that was his reason for that move. 